Hello, good evening to you. Welcome. This is Ghana Tonight. We're live from up at Desawe Kanda. Also live on 23 Ghana on Facebook, DSV Channel 279. All across the world on 3news.com. I am Alfred Okonse. Tonight, Ghanaians mourn the passing of former First Lady Theresa Kofo and, and Council of State member and uh, former member of Parliament for Ningo Pram Pram constituency in Octemensa. We speak to close associates of uh, these persons. Stay with us here on Ghana Tonight. Um, as we get into a lot more of it. Very interesting developments. But as the Electoral Commission of Ghana draws curtains on its limited voter registration exercise, indicating it will not extend it, it says the entire exercise and seek answers if all stakeholders are satisfied with that decision for the EC not to extend this process. Also, the decision by the bulk oil storage and transportation company that's boss to purchase iPhones for management members has stoked public uproar. Tonight, we speak to anti-corruption campaigners on this issue as regards value for money. And also, we'll hear from a member of the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament because this is also a matter of interest that many Ghanaians expect the Public Accounts Committee to ask critical questions of BOST about this particular decision they took. But a lot more coming up, as always. You are an integral part of the conversation. Let's hear from you. The hashtag we're using is Ghana Tonight on Facebook and Twitter. Let's get talking. Let's set to full Ghana Brief. The Ghana Police Service says the minority in Parliament and other protesters set to hit the streets of Accra on Tuesday will not be allowed near the premises of the Bank of Ghana. It explains the area is a security zone and not conducive to mass gathering of citizens. Per the security assessment conducted by the police service, the Bank of Ghana is a security zone and we've advised the organizers accordingly. And if they have any dissatisfaction with the police uh, proposal to them, they are allowed to go to the court so that the court determines the matter. Boku Central Member of Parliament, Mahama Yariga, says he will refer the Governor of the Central Bank, Dr. Ernest Addison, along with his deputies and board and management to the Special Prosecutor, over the award of contracts for the new Bank of Ghana head office. The legislator in an open letter to the Bank of Ghana governor has called out Dr. Addison over what he says is collusion with contractors resulting in the overpricing of the projects. The latest from the Member of Parliament comes after he filed a right to information request demanding details of the contract of the project which he says has become the subject of national anger. However, the BOG's response only quoted a completion date of September 2024 with the cost of the building at some 222 million US dollars. The response by the central bank have, however, been described as unsatisfactory with the Boku Central legislator promising to pursue the governor till all the details are laid bare. With the end of the voters' registration exercise later for Monday, some youth are pleading for an extension of the registration process. This is as a result of the huge numbers recorded at some centers, causing frustration among registrants. There are a lot of people here, so... And people too are cheating, like, if you are here before them, they'll just come and just come and take over. I think they should extend their time because there are a lot of people who haven't done theirs. In our time, there will be, I mean, a, a lot of noise in front there. Uh, people are bringing in protocols, people who come, they say they are from here. So there, there is a lot of frustration, that is why the land is not moving. Fellows with renal conditions are still paying the revised dialysis cost of 765 Ghana cities. Despite Kolebu teaching hospital management insistence, the new fee was a proposal and only five people were asked to pay. 14 fellows died during the carbon dialysis center shutdown between May and September. With this proposed price, the annual cost of dialysis is going to shoot from 54,720 Ghana cities to an unbearable cost of 110,160 Ghana cities. That is if they are to increase the price to 765 Ghana cities. Not forgetting the other huge costs embedded in the numerous lab tests, 
every month catheter and fistula fixing and replacement when needed. The Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, has visited former President John Ejikum Kofor to commiserate with him over the death of his wife, Theresa Kofor, who died on Sunday at the age of 87. A book of condolence has been opened at the Kofor residence in Pidiasi in the eastern region. We're going to be having more on, on this as we also um, commensurate with the families of the, the late Theresa Kufour and then also the Honorable Enokte Mensa. Uh, we'll have Kleto Savoka and Professor Bafwa Jimendia. He's going to be joining us as we go on here on Ghana Tonight. But coming up next, the decision by the bulk oil storage and transportation company that's boss to purchase iPhones for management members has stoked public opera. There's something in the boss statement in response to this that's generated a lot more questions and, and we're going to be asking those critical questions of anti-corruption campaigners and also the, the uh, Public Accounts Committee of Parliament on the issue of value for money. Very critical indeed. This, this is the response from the boss on this particular decision they took to go and buy these iPhones. Now, the company bought 18 pieces of iPhone 13, iPhone 13 Pro Max, for their corporate executives in May 2022. The total cost of the phone stood at 234,000 CDs, grossed up for taxes. So you added the taxes to it, it shot up to 285,412 Ghana CDs, 18 iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now, take a look at this. The reason for the purchase of the device was to equip the team to stay in touch with management information and business intelligence systems of the company for efficient decision making in the petroleum storage and transportation space. A split second can make the difference between success and failure. So the, the justification by boss is that they, they needed these phones for their top management and, and also their staff to be able to connect to the management information and business intelligence system of the company for efficient decision making. That's number one. The results so far attest to the efficiency of the systems put in place, which include the access points for key members of the team to access processed information for efficient decision making that is the thrust of boss's justification for this decision they go on to say that the 28.54 million cities in the report that's they're talking about the auditor general's report may be due to a typographical error of placing the dot two steps to the right which on the face of the document converted the 285,412 CDs and 61 pesos to 28,541,261. You know, the initial figure which was reported was that Boss has spent 28, over 28.5 million on buying iPhone 13 for 18 of its top management staff. They came out with that 285,000 figure. But then again, it raises fundamental questions, and that's why uh, we're, we're getting to the anti-corruption space. And then also we put the reason that Bost put out justifying this decision as to whether it, it stands the test of time. Adam Senanu is the co-chair of the Citizens' Movement Against Corruption. And Dr. Clement Park is a member of the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament, the Bosa South Member of Parliament, is going to be joining us as we go on. I thank you so much, Mr. Senanu, for your time here on, on Ghana tonight. This is the statement from Bost. Explaining why they did this, does this justify or answer the question of the value for money because they say that it's supposed to help the staff connect to the management and business information systems of the company? Why is that? Hello, Ms. Hello, if, if you can hear me, I, I was asking about whether this statement by Bost 
uh, does answer the question about the value for money issues that you raised earlier? I think that the phone pricing, you can get good phones um, between 1,000 Ghana and 5,000 Ghana, top of the range, most of them between two five five thousand you get um the functionalities are basically the same if there's a special technical function usually it will relate to the apps on the phone but not the phone itself so the phone has a capacity to store information uh to get you access it's if there's any application you download it you have it installed and you use it. I honestly don't see what additional value, especially when you are in a period of austerity. I don't see how this can be described as a prudent use of resources. And I don't see what value, what additional value any phone above that range would, would, would provide. So it'll be interesting to find out what specifications they took to the market as part of the procurement process. What were the quotations they got? So starting with the specifications, because you usually it's the specs that will determine what the market will give you, what the specifications we're looking for. And why those specifications? Because I don't, I don't think that there is any need for a 15,000 Ghana CD phone. In, in fact, um, well, you're right about this. When you do the math, um, one phone will cost a little over 15,000 CDs because they're saying they bought it for 18 of the top executives and the strategic management staff of the company. So over 15,000 CDs per phone in this instance. Is that or no? Anyone can give to convince any Ghanaian citizen that this is a good use of the resources of the nation. My explanation. In fact, what it then begins to highlight for me is whether we shouldn't have a thorough look at all our boards at the moment. For all we know, this is a pattern and trend across boards where they are demanding from management certain pecs uh, that, that, you know, add, add a, uh, at a cost to the, to the nation. Don't forget, as part of the post um, thing, the current fuel builder includes a bust special levy. Now, this is the situation. Ghanaians are having to pay much more money at the pump because there's a boss special levy. And when that levy brings them returns, instead of that being channeled into improvements and values for Ghanaians, it's being creamed off and being used for iPhones at 15,000 Ghana cities. Is that responsible leadership or responsible citizenship? I don't see the value for money there. And there's no technical argument that can make me, I believe, and I'm sure if you brought some of the uh, phone experts, technical experts, ICT experts, and asked them about phones, and if you needed a special phone, whether it's about a 15,000 Ghana City phone or is about an application on a standard phone, which you should be able to get, if it's expensive, probably around 3,000 Ghana, you should get something that is more than state of, of the art. I don't think there's any justification that can convince me, and I'm sure many Ghanaians who are lying, that 15,000 Ghana CD phone for every board member and other members of staff is a, is, a, is a way to go in the single year where boss seems to have made some inroads. How many years have they not made a loss? And in a single year, then what happens in subsequent years? Why is don't it, we ask it where, if it were your own business or your, your own private entity, would you use the money that way? Would you not be thinking about reinvestment and expansion to sustain the growth hmm. of the business? But, Mr. Zano, if you, you make reference to the, 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 the books of boss, yes, they, they, for, for the first time in a long while, they posted some profits. And in fact, in addition to that, this is the justification. You, you were asking that you don't think any form of justification would convince you that this 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 15,000 per one iPhone is, is, is justifiable uh, and reasonable for that matter. They say the reason for the purchase of this 18 iPhones was to equip the, the, the people who received it to stay in touch 
with the management information and business intelligence systems of the company for efficient decision making. Because in, in their view, in the petroleum storage and transportation space, a split second can make a difference between success and failure. So the iPhone was supposed to help them to do that. Is that no? it, it cannot be the phone by itself. It is an app that you install on it. So you don't need a 15,000 Ghana CD iPhone. It cannot be that the phone by itself is just connected. To it. It's usually there's an app that is put on the phone that allows you access. Now the access is simply a good phone that can get it connectivity has data uh, whichever network uh, towers are available once that network is is online you are there so that uh, additional technical language does not change the fact that any good phone with an app the app is the one that will be tailored custom made to the specific system that they may have for both and i don't know what kind of system they have that we will require that your members must go and buy 15,000 Ghana CD phones. Then whoever came up with that system must also be questioned. I, I see. But, Mr. Advalage, go beyond this public uproar and then all these critical questions you're asking of boss, and I'm sure that there has to be, in your view, if this is uh, very cogent questions you're asking, which other body, Public Accounts Committee or any other body, must take this matter up to, to ask and get some answers to these questions you're asking? I think that uh, if the Auditor General's department in their uh, annual audit, uh, they thought it was okay. You know, you can't do, you don't usually get to do a 100% audit of everything, including the supporting invoices and receipts. So it's well possible that uh, beyond looking at the fact that figure was incredulous at the time that you had the additional zero, <laughs> Uh, now that they've corrected it, they are doing that retrospectively. <clears throat> what it means is that the auditor, if I saw a figure of two million, I thought this was crazy. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. <laughs> if the figure is collect is corrected to two hundred fifty thousand Ghana cities, uh, at the time I would still think there was a problem, and then I would now call for the supporting um, uh, documentation. It's possible they didn't get a chance to look at that because in the first instance, the figure was just so outlandish that I guess nah, this one is problematic. Um, so there is reason to now look at the process itself in the documentation. I assume Boss has an internal auditor. What does he have to say about this? I see. Um, but, but you see, it's one of the things we should be because you're talking about issues related to the, the issues related to Ms. Anu, thank you, and uh, and you're asking questions of the uh, the Public Accounts Committee. Dr. Clementa Park is a member of the Public Accounts Committee. He is joining us on Zoom as well. That is, if it's going to be a matter of of interest for them. Dr. Park, thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. I mean, you've heard the anti-corruption crusaders. I'm saying I know race. These questions about the value for money that's audit or decision by boss to buy these phones for their, their staff to, to work. Now, is it a matter of concern for you that, that for you, Public Accounts Committee, that you will take interest in going forward? Yes. Um, I've also become aware of uh, a situation where boss. Uh, apparently procured uh, a number of uh, iPhones. And uh, for something like this, it is my expectation that it would have been captured by the auditors. And if that turns out to be true, uh, then given that we are here to look at the 2022 uh, audit reports, uh, one bust appears before the Public Accounts Committee, um, answers would have to be provided to justify why uh, public resources uh, should be expended uh, to buy uh, iPhones for uh, a certain group of staff uh, at BOST. I see, but what, what are the critical questions that you're going to be asking of this if, if it, they do appear before you? And this particular report would eventually come to you as Public Accounts Committee. So what are those critical questions that we're supposed to be expecting from you, members of the Public Accounts Committee? Well, as we always do when 
I mean, we will hold sittings uh, as per the Auditor General's report when referred to us by the Speaker. Uh, even when a particular expenditure uh, violates any of our laws and our rules, the public financial management or uh, violates uh, procurements, or there is no uh, justification for an expenditure because uh, it is not supported in a budget and or approved, then the individuals or officers who were responsible for such an expenditure uh, would have to account. Uh, and there are instances where uh, the committee may direct uh, that because uh, such a purchase was not in the public interest or the interest of the institution, or the purchase was not something that um, was planned and executed to enhance the work of the institution, uh, then those who superintended over that uh, could be asked to refund the total cost of the uh, iPhones and right. perhaps even pay an interest on it because we know the, the time value uh, of money. Of, of money. Well, well, we'll wait to see, in fact, uh, that period when this, this report comes before you as members of the Public Accounts Committee uh, of Parliament. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Clement Parks, Member of Parliament for the Bursa South Constituency. Also to you, Adam Sedanu, coach of the Citizens Movement Against Corruption. But coming up next, Ghanaians mourn the passing of former First Lady Theresa Kofor and Council of State Member and former Member of Parliament for the Ningo Prom Prom Constituency held a number of portfolios in this country in Nocte Mensa, popularly referred to as E.T. Mensa. We speak to some persons close uh, to them. Uh, but we, we put together uh, a profile of the two. I Meanwhile, the, the president has also been, been talking. If I issued a statement on this, this is it. Take a look. Um, on the instructions of the president, this is coming from the information minister, Kujopo Nkrumah, Nanado Dankwe Kufuado. All flags across the nation and at Ghana's diplomatic mission shall fly at half mast from Monday, October 2nd. To 2023 to Sunday, October 8, 2023. This is in tribute to former First Lady Mrs. Theresa Kufour, who passed away on 1st of October 2023. Mrs. Kufour lived a life of compassion, unwavering dedication, and selfless service to the people of Ghana. And we extend the heartfelt and condolences to President J. Kufour and the family as we collectively mourn the loss of a remarkable woman who touched the hearts of many. And that's a statement that was earlier issued by uh, Kojo Ponkrumah Information Minister um, on this. But let's go on to Zoom now. Professor Bafwa Jimendia is the Chief Executive Officer of the John Ejikum Kufour Foundation. He is in Ohio, uh, the state of Ohio in the United States. Thank you so much, Professor Bafwa Jimendia, for joining us here. Um, on Ghana tonight. First of all, I mean, we, we cannot imagine um, what the former president, John E. Jacob Kufour, is, is going through as we speak. But how would you describe the, the late Theresa Kufour's impact and influence as First Lady, as you did know her? Madam Theresa was the First Lady. Uh, she was always uh, uh, graceful and respectful in her role. Her demeanor was always subdued. She was not a loud person. Personally, I don't think she had any personal ambitions except to support her husband. And I think some observers have even claimed that perhaps she was an unwilling first lady. I don't believe that is the case. I think she was simply a mother first and foremost. Because if you recall the story of the two individuals in the 
biography that was written by uh, Ivo, it's clear that Mr. Kufo had a very long political journey. And throughout that journey, it was Teresa who was home to take care of the house and especially the five children that they had. And that I think that anchored her as a mother in this whole process uh, that the president had to go through. But of course, she was the backbone of the president. She was quietly her main supporter and admirer as a politician and provided every support that the man needed to be successful as president. So in that respect, I think uh, Madame Teresa was truly a great woman, a great mother, and a great first lady. I mean, she, she's sister to, to J.H. Mensah, the late, also a very powerful and, and giant figure in the politics of this country. I mean, unlike other first ladies, you could almost say that uh, the late Teresa Kofu was very collected and and in, in for the views of lack of a better expression, not too outward, as we've seen um, other first ladies, at least currently and in the past, is it not? Correct. That's why I said some observers even believe that she was an unwilling first lady. Simply that she was not outbound like many other first ladies that we have come to know. Uh, she was not ambitious in terms of her own personal projection, politically or otherwise. And even when she formed the uh, Mother Teresa uh, Mother and Baby Care Foundation that she set up, she was very quiet about that, but effectively doing the work that she had to do. So in that respect, even though she comes from a very political background in terms of her siblings and others being actively uh, politicians, she herself was very much reticent and never stepping ahead of any of those big political giants that she had in the family. So I think what we can say about her is that in public life, she conducted herself with grace and respect. And I think it's that grace and respect that really carved the character that we know of her. In, in your view and, and the close knowledge that you have of her beyond what we have read, how would you want her to be remembered in, in Ghanaian politics? She was not a politician, but her husband, who was and still is a politician, was called the gentle giant because of the stature. And in politics, he truly also became a, a, a gentle giant. So if you are married to a gentle giant, <laughs> it's not easy to kind of assert yourself that much. But I think on a more serious note, I think Madame Teresa deserves uh, every respect and honor that any first lady deserves because without her, perhaps her husband will not be a successful president that so many people are today clamoring for. So I think her strength, her inner strength and the unbridled support that she provided the husband must be part of the political history anytime you talk about President Kufu in Ghanaian politics. I, I thank you so much, and uh, I'm sure we we'll say may her so continue to rest in perfect peace. Professor Bafua Jimendia, thank you for connecting with us um, from Ohio in the United States. He is the CEO of the John H. Gumkufo Foundation, and we're also mourning the late Enoch Te Mensa, and this is a brief profile we put together for him. The Honorable Kletus Avoka is going to be joining us on Zoom shortly, but this is a brief on the late E.T. Mensa. Honorable Enoch Tay Mensa was born in May 1946 in Koforidia in the Eastern Region. He worked in various capacities as a public servant and a politician. As a politician, he was the PNDC Metropolitan Secretary for Accra, now Mayor of Accra for 10 years from 1982 to 1992. In 1992, when the country was ushered into democratic governance, E.T. Mensah became the deputy PNDC secretary for youth and sports. 
By dint of hard work, dedication and valor, he was promoted to substantive minister of youth and sports in April 1993 till January 6, 2001. He introduced professional football and the Premier League. He was a founding member, national youth organizer and vice chairman of the National Democratic Congress, NDC, for many years. He founded TAIN and was the MP for Ningo Pram Pram constituency for five consecutive times, thus 20 years, Minister of Employment and Social Welfare, and also acted as Minister of Education and Agriculture. He served as a member of government tax force to oversee the implementation of the President's priority projects at the office of the President. On that note, when we ended the late Enoch Temenses profile, he was one of the three wise men that the former president, John Mahama, put together. And one of the three wise men who is still alive um, is joining us on Zoom. The Honorable Kletus Avoka, who is member of parliament, former member of parliament and also uh, one of the three wise men. Thank you so much, Kletus Avoka. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. First of all, I mean, you were with the late E.T. Mensah in the second, third, fifth, and sixth parliament. Right? And how, how would you remember this, this man that you sat with in many, many capacities? Sir, as uh, the majority chief whip in parliament in 2009, that was the, the, the fifth parliament of the Republic of Ghana in the Fourth Republic. Uh, first, second, he was not in the first parliament. He joined us later. And then the, in 2009, when I was the minister for the interior, E.T. Mensah was uh, um, a majority uh, chief whip of the NDC parliament. Mm. I recall how active and resourceful he was during the vetting of ministers of state. Uh, and nominated by late President uh, John Evans at Tam Mills. E.T. Mensah was all over the place trying to organize us and mobilize us and facilitated the, the, the vetting of uh, ministers of state and their swearing and, in, and their approval in parliament. I recall that uh, because of attendance to parliament, every morning E.T. Mensah would take the role of ministers and invite or remind ministers that they had a role to play in parliament and that they should come. Some of the times that you are not very uh, well uh, uh, involved in parliamentary work, he will advise you to stay away and that he will come back to you. So this was somebody who was very up to his responsibility as a chief whip. And then this is somebody who was also interested in the welfare of members of parliament as a chief whip. And later on, E.T. Mensa became um, Minister for Employment and then uh, Labor and Employment Relations employment and labor relations, when at that time I was the majority leader, and we had a lot of cooperation together. It's interesting to note that before then, E.T. Mensa had held many positions. Um, in the first, in the one of the early days in parliament, E.T. Mensa was the team manager of the parliamentary football team. <laughs> I know he used to play fan matches with the media, extra. Mm. and E.T. Mensa was also um, was our leader and then the, our, our, our team manager. So he's somebody where two or three, three, two or three or more people gather, and mm -hmm. each man is there, he's leader. Where two or three or four more people gather, and then each man is amongst them, he is a leader. So he's born with such prowess, such, a, 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 such ability to provide leadership, and, and of course, leadership with integrity. So um, as Minister for Employment and Labor Relations, E.T. Mensah was very active in managing the trade union in Ghana and then the workers of this country. I recall that E.T. Mensah was uh, combining the Ministry of uh, Youth and uh, Sports together with the youth organizer of the National Democratic Congress. These were two heavy portfolios. Youth organizer of the National Democratic Congress traveling throughout the country organizing the youth and at the same time the Minister for Youth and Sports. He held this position successfully until it came to time that there was a decision by the national executive of the party that no minister of state should encumber two positions. Right. If you are a minister of state, 
um, or even an MP, you didn't need to hold a, a party functional executive position. That is how E.T. Mensah relinquished that position. I see. But he held those two positions with a lot of um, credit and merit. And this tells you something. Right. That E.T. Uh, uh, was if somebody if, that, that's, who if could hold, hold on a bit for me, Honorable Klaas Zavoka, if you could sit back a bit for me, because you are too much into the camera, sit back for me. But aside your period of service with him in parliament as members of parliament you were also chosen as part of the three wise men together with the current speaker of parliament Aban Sumana for Bagman yourself and the late E.T. Mensa and some persons held the view that you the three wise men that position wasn't really important it was more like job for the boys that John Mahama had given to you I mean how would you describe your period of service within the three wise men that period well, uh, President Mahama at the time uh, decided that there were some major projects that he was going to undertake in the country. And then even though uh, they, they were related to various ministries, he thought that given our experience and then our knowledge of the country and then the party, etc., and uh, it was important that we spearheaded those particular projects. And then these were three projects that he had identified subject to the availability of funds. One was that we were to build an international airport in the Pram Pram area. And then the, because it, and then also to have uh, regional aerodromes so that uh, uh, people who fell ill in the various parts of the country could be airlifted easily to the, to the various uh, medical centers. And then because E.T. Mensa came from the Pram Pram area as MP for the area, we decided that he should handle that portfolio as a special, I mean, for, uh, the, as a task force member, he could handle the, the, the portfolio that was to deal with the uh, building of an international airport and then the also improving of the local Kotoka airport for, for the country. He was for, responsible for that. Bagwin, of course, had come from the Ministry of Health as a health minister. So uh, President Mahmoud decided that he was going to build a number of regional referral hospitals. So that instead of uh, having Ule Kulubu and then the that is, I mean, Kulibu and then the Kofanochi uh, as a referral hospitals. Some of the regions will be upgraded. Their hospital will be upgraded okay. so that they can take care of other referral right. cases. And then, of course, there was this uh, e-blocks uh, uh, project that he was to build to take care of community day senior high schools. And I was to be responsible for that. You are aware that the, the, the e-block scheme was largely successful during the tenure of uh, late President Mahama up to 2016. Mm. A good number of them were completed to reduce the number of congestion in the in the senior high schools. But many of them too, because of the delay in financial uh, uh, availability, did not take place. It was when right. we handed over in 20, January 2017 that many of them were not completed. But during the period that uh, we were in office, that okay. is uh, 2013 to 2016, uh, many of them were completed. It is also a fact that that was, even though we did not do the, um, the international airport at uh, Ningo Pram Pram area, mm -hmm. uh, the Kotuka International Airport was refurbished. That's Terminal that 3. That is why Terminal 3 okay. came into being. But you see, there are so some people within the NDC, uh, uh, that's Honorable Klaus Zavoka, who were not too happy when the late E.T. Mensa was actually elected to be part of this Council of State of President Kofuado, some persons within your party as well. Was it a concern that you shared as well? The nature of Ghanaian politics is, uh, is, is very fluid. Uh, you can be right, you can be wrong. Uh, E.T. Mensah, I think, as an individual, if you look at the constitution and the function of the Council of State, it's not an extension of the government of the day. It's not an extension of the government of the day. It's supposed to advise the president, parliament, etc. And they're supposed to play a top, uh, a top gap position when there are some bills that the president has referred to the Council of State for them. Yes. I know that um, some people think that the Council of State is, uh, uh, is, an, is an, uh, a superfluous office. Uh, it's not the best. I mean, it should have been the second institutional failure. If people actually the provincial of state is a, a good place. So E.T. Mensah, I think, had a good will to serve his people from parliament, from the executive. He thought they could serve his people at, the, uh, at that apex level. And if some people misconstrued it to say that because this is an MPP era or administration and he decided to go to Council of State, uh, uh, I may differ in the sense that 
Each mm -hmm. minister was not appointed by the president to serve on the Council of State. He was elected by the people of the Greater Accra region to serve there. And I think that that is a feather in the, in the, in the, in the life of E.T. Mensa. And then I think he has left a positive legacy that uh, we should try to emulate. And E.T. Mensa, even though he's not seeing us today, we will be very happy if some of the ideas he stood for, some of the works that he had done, will be completed and then his legacy can be extolled. The Member of Parliament for the Zebela Constituency, thank you. Uh, Honorable Kletus Avoka, thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Now, coming up next, as the Electoral Commission of Ghana draws curtains on its limited voter registration exercise, in fact, it's ended already, indicating it will not extend. We have some reactions and assessment of the entire exercise and seek answers if all stakeholders are satisfied with this decision. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly after this quick break. Auditioning, auditioning, auditioning. Media General Group is hereby inviting all interested persons who aspire to become news presenters for auditioning as follows. Date, Thursday, October 5, 2023. The time is 9 a.m. Venue is at the premises of Media General Ghana. Required competencies. Excellent reading skills. Fluent in English. Excellent editing skills. Outgoing abreast with local and international developments, news gathering and reporting skills, good writing, communication and presentation skills, ability to think creatively and good research skills, qualification, first degree in social sciences, communication or journalism and related disciplines, master's degree is preferred. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to demonstrate to you the superior properties of Flamingo paint as compared to other paint brands on the market. We take equal quantities of Flamingo paint and this ordinary paint. We then dilute them with water. And now, let the test begin. The gentleman on the left is going to apply the ordinary paint and the gentleman on my right will use the Flamingo superior paint. As you can clearly see, Flamingo has the obvious better hiding. Furthermore, Flamingo has painted a much larger area. You know, one bucket of Flamingo paint is equal to several buckets of any other paint brand on the market. Flamingo paint is made with superior formulation to give superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage. Flamingo paint, simply superior. I want you so bad, Alpha Cracker. I want you. I wanna say yes, I can't resist. I want you. Ooh, I want wow. you, Alpha Cracker. I want you so bad, Alpha Cracker. <laughs> Have a goodness rich in milk and butter in Alpha Cracker. Yummy and deliciously crunchy. But I can't resist you. Alpha Crackers, simply irresistible. This advert is FDA approved. Hello! Have you heard of the Franco air condition specially made to fit the Ghanaian weather? It has authentic capabilities, which is the original sizes ranging from the 1.5 horsepower, 2.0 horsepower, and the 2.5 horsepower. So if you are looking for an air condition to fit your homes, offices, schools, hotels, apartments, churches, it's Franco Trading Enterprise. For bulk purchases, look no further than Franco Trading Enterprise. Franco Trading Enterprise, the home of quality.
quality air conditioning. When you have the extra bit of ambition in your heart, you also need extra bit of energy to come through. And for that, Rush Energy is the perfect boost to get over the line. Created in the USA and proudly made in Ghana. Thanks to the unique formula, you have the power of ginseng. The benefit of vitamins and all the energy of inositol, taurine and caffeine. Anytime you need to go beyond, Rush Energy will help you get there. Auditioning, auditioning, auditioning. Media General Group is hereby inviting all interested persons who aspire to become news presenters for auditioning as follows. Date, Thursday, October 5, 2023. The time is 9 a.m. Venue is at the premises of Media General Ghana. Required competencies. Excellent reading skills. Fluent in English. Excellent editing skills. Outgoing. Abreast with local and international developments. News gathering and reporting skills. Good writing, communication and presentation skills. Ability to think creatively and good research skills. Qualification, first degree in social sciences, communication or journalism and related disciplines. Master's degree is preferred. Welcome back to Ghana Tonight here on TV3, now also live on uh, TV3 Ghana on Facebook, DSV Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. The limited voter registration exercise period has ended, at least uh, by 5 p.m. today. Now, the Electoral Commission issued a statement, and we have copy of it. It says the Electoral Commission wishes to inform the general public that the 2023 voter registration exercise ended. 5 p.m. today, the 2nd of October 2023. This is the date that they had earlier communicated that the, the, this was going to end. The public is informed that the commission will not extend the voter registration exercise. The commission, however, assures the general public that arrangements have been made uh, to ensure that eligible vote citizens who are in the queue or before 5 p.m. today are registered uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, the 3rd of October, 2023. That, and, and also this arrangement will be extended only to eligible applicants in the queue at 5 p.m. today. So those who are in the queue are at 5 p.m. today, saying that tomorrow you can turn up. The commission wishes to th actually thank the general public for the cooperation and, and support during the 21-day uh, registration exercise and signed by the acting head of public affairs, uh, Michael Buedu. Now, there's some reaction to it, especially because of uh, the Electoral Commission's decision to reduce the target. Now, the 1,350,000 approximate number of eligible voters were supposed to be registered within this period. The EC revised its target to about 52% of this figure of 1,350,000. That's where political parties are raising fundamental questions about what happens to the eligible voters who couldn't register, who were not registered within this period to take part in the district assembly elections. Herina Nabuachi is national organizer of the MPP. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. There's been calls for the EC to extend this limited voter exercise beyond today because of the some eligible voters who couldn't be registered within this period. Is it a call that the NPP supports? You know, the Electoral Commission today came up with a press release. And in that press release, um, and even in previous uh, press engagement, they have had, they indicated that they would um, create another opportunity for all those who have turned 18 and all those who could not register to still register. And, and that would be 
um, towards the 2024 elections. So we are not too much worried about the process, although if, um, the EC had indicated its intentions of maybe extending the period, it would have been a welcoming news. But then, however, because the EC within some few months would also open up um, the limited exercise size for people who could not register to register. I, I, and then the party is of the belief that uh, we need to just support the electoral commission uh, in this. But if the window for registration uh, would have been closed by this particular exercise, then clearly we would have also agitated that there should be an extension of the time because a lot of people possibly could not register. If it is rather a whole month, um, it would be much better than the 21 days. So I've monitored, I visited almost about 70 constituencies. I mean, it's, uh, it's okay for now. Let's support the Electoral Commission in what they are doing. Uh, well so yeah, okay. I think the concern here is that, yes, the Electoral Commission has indicated that there will be other opportunities for persons, eligible voters, to be registered before election 2024. But how about the district-level elections as well, that eligible voters could, in fact, will be disenfranchised if the Electoral Commission does not make provision to register all eligible voters before the district assembly elections in a couple of months? Yeah, we are okay. We are okay because, as I said, um, the electoral commission will still give us the opportunity to, to register. Uh, because even tomorrow or the day after, every other day you will get some uh, you know, persons turning 18. So um, it will be practically difficult for you to capture everybody uh, within this 21-day limited registration exercise. Somebody will turn 18 in December. The person cannot register today. Somebody will turn 18 in November. He cannot register. Next year, the person may not be able to register. So the Electoral Commission says that they would have another opportunity for uh, those who have not been able to register to register. And I think that we need to support them. Now, if you listen to the other political parties, the they are not necessarily against the EC's arrangement, but they are of the view that even if there will be some process or an opportunity to have more persons registered next year, an extension is still necessary considering that people have had to travel long distances and then also some of them have unfortunately not been able to access these places because of the increasing cost of living and, and bearing the cost of even guarantors who have to come and guarantee for them because they don't have the Ghana card. Are you saying that there's no merit in, in these concerns that the other political parties are raising? I, I don't understand. You are asking for something which will be given to you at a later date. So why not wait? I think that sometimes this the penchant of the NDC to you know launch on anything they get just to bastardize the electoral commission is quite worthy because it is not as if we not be given the opportunity. The EC already has made I mean this announcement that um, the EC is making preparations to open another window of opportunity. So, where from this name calling and then the electoral commission uh, deliberately is trying to frustrate people. I mean, I do not get this. It's, it's most important. The electoral commission has given a certain limited opportunity for persons who have turned 18 to register. The okay. electoral commission was working within a certain framework relative to federal. They have finished with their 21-day limit registration exercise. The Electoral Commission has announced that they do not intend to extend the period. Rather, if by 5 p.m. today, if we are still in the queue, they will give you the opportunity to register tomorrow. 
Well, we'll see how the candidates will look like on this, and then also whether the Electoral Commission is going to consider their calls for extension. Thank you. Um, Aaron Nanabwachi is national organizer of the new patriotic party. But up next, Boko Central Member of Parliament, uh, Mama Yarga, says he will refer the governor of the Central Bank, Dr. Ernest Addison, along with his deputies and the board and management to the special prosecutor over the award of the contract for the new Bank of Ghana head office. I, 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 I spoke to him earlier on News 360, but the Ghana Police Service has also been talking about the minority in parliament and other protesters set to hit the street of a crowd tomorrow. He said they will not allow them near the premises of the central bank. Here's the, the Ghana Police Service earlier today addressing the press. The protest does not necessarily determine the roots of the protest. And as I mentioned earlier, the service has engaged extensively with the demonstrators, and this is the agreed route. This is the route that both parties have agreed on, and these are the routes that are going to be used. So from the locations I mentioned, that is going to be the exact places that the demonstration, will, where it will begin, where they will pass through, and where they will terminate. That is what has been agreed upon, and that is what will follow tomorrow. So per the security assessment conducted by the police service, the Bank of Ghana is a security zone, and we've advised the organizers accordingly. And if they have any dissatisfaction with the police uh, proposal to them, they are allowed to go to the court so that the court determines the matter. But we want to urge every member of the public who want to participate in tomorrow's demonstration to show up and be assured that we are adequately prepared to ensure their safety and security during the period of the protest. Now, Boko Central Member of Parliament, Mama Yerga, spoke to him earlier on, the, on this demonstration that's the Occupy BOG protest and asked him if what the police is saying is really consistent with the agreement that they reached during their meetings prior to tomorrow. Take a look. The meeting, and we came to an understanding that, that we will stop at the runabout at the Supreme Court building. That is what I recall was agreed uh, between us and the police. But this evening, listening to the police at their press conference, they said that we will turn at the uh, national lotteries. That mm -hmm. was not the agreement. The agreement was not for us to turn at the national lotteries. The agreement was for us to get to the runabout at the Supreme Court building and turn. So I can assure you that we are going to stick to the agreement that we had with them. I don't know who briefed the lady who read the press statement of the police, but she was wrongly briefed because we were clear in the meeting where we will turn and go back to the uh, Independence Square. We will start from uh, Kwame Nkrumah Circle mm -hmm. to Adabraka, and then we will turn left at Adabraka and pass through Asylum Down. The We will be there with the protesters tomorrow, every step of the way. And so stay with us here across all media journal platforms. On behalf of the rest of the team, I want to say thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Join us same time tomorrow. I am Alfred Akansi. Have a good night. Ghana Tonight is brought to you by Flamingo Paint. Superior durability. Superior hiding. Superior superior